Hey everyone, I have a feeling there are some new faces here, so let me take a minute to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Marnie. I'm known as Miss Gold Girl here on YouTube and all over social media. And usually I make videos talking about beauty, reviewing makeup products, fashion, when I say fashion, like trying on clothes for the everyday woman, that sort of thing. But circumstances are a little bit different right now. I also have three dogs that are wandering around my home as you speak, so you probably hear them in the background. There goes one. But my point is things are a little bit different for a lot of us. And even though I work from home, I make my YouTube videos right here in my kitchen, many of you are finding yourself in a very unique circumstance that you're finding yourself on camera maybe for the first time in your life. For many of you on Zoom or FaceTime, Skype, some sort of work at home video conferencing setup. And I've had so many requests, emails, DMs, what have you, asking if I could give you some tips on how to be on camera. None of this is rocket science. All of this has been discussed somewhere on the internet before, but I'm hoping it's all here in one spot to help you. And stay tuned for the very end. I'm gonna share with you a couple of recipes that have been getting me through all this, some favorite books, and of course, as always, everything will be listed in the order in which I discuss them in the description box. So click on show more if you wanna follow along down there. So tip number one, a clean background is the key. It does not mean that you need to be filming in front of a white studio background. I don't do that, as you can see, I'm in my kitchen. But it is clean, as in it is clutter-free. There is no distraction, hopefully, behind me, unless there's a dog, which I cannot tell because I am looking at the lens and not the monitor. That's another point we're gonna talk about in a minute. If you're in your bedroom, make the bed clear away some of the clutter, make the scene behind you as simple and minimalistic as possible. Just think about what you like to look at when you're watching a video. Tip number two, it's the makeup that you're wearing. So first of all, if you don't normally wear makeup, now's the time to pull out what you have it is nice to put some makeup on for this event. You're not, your camera's not gonna pick up every nuance, every blemish, like the one on my cheek, but anyway. My point is, it's not going to be your best friend either, so now is the time to do some minimal makeup. It's not the time to bust out that tutorial for the dark, smoky eye you've always wanted to try. You want to look like yourself. The people that are watching you already know you, they know what you look like, they want to see the person they know. Generally speaking, the areas you wanna focus on are do your brows. Even if you never pencil in your brows, this is a good time to do it. It's a defining feature on your face. Either use a pencil if that's something you already use. If it's something you don't, find a neutral colored eyeshadow, something that's a little cool toned, even gray, and take a very thin eyeshadow brush and just pencil it in along the edges. Give yourself some more brows. There's tons of tutorials out there. I have a really old one. I, I try to dig up and link it here or put it in the description box. Brush them up, just clean them up a little bit. Don't worry about tweezing and all that. The webcam is not going to pick up your stray hairs and none of us need to worry about that right now. Another area that you wanna use um, some makeup on are your lashes, again, Everyone's gonna be looking at your eyes for the most part. Now is the time to curl those lashes and slap on some mascara. The camera can wash you out. So even if you don't normally wear bronzer, get a big fluffy brush and do your three on one side and your E on the other. Dust it across your cheekbones, across the bridge of your nose, just to add some warmth and life to your face, especially for those of us that are literally staying inside as much as possible. This will help. Another uh, makeup item that's good to pull out right now is lipstick. But the lipstick that I think is key during a Zoom meeting, if you wanna wear it, is either a stain or a long wearing one, something you don't have to fuss with or think about. So I'm wearing a Dior, more of a liquid lipstick. You don't have to go that high end, whatever you have on hand. And if you just have a regular tube lipstick, just blot it in with your fingers. Don't waste a tissue right now, we're on short supply. Just so you know, it's kind of smudged in there and you don't have to fuss with it coming off during the course of the meeting. The last key makeup item that's kind of important for a Zoom conference or any kind of webcam thing is powder. We tend to sweat when we get nervous. Most of you are not comfortable being on camera. That's what I'm hearing in the comments. So powder, especially because the light that is going to be shining off of your perspiring face will reflect even more so on camera. So even if you consider yourself a dry skin person, now is the time to 
lightly powder before you get on camera. Since we're talking makeup, point number three has to do with your hair. Keep it simple, generally wear it how you normally would. I am actually not wearing it how I normally am to make a point. I've been playing with how I style my hair while I'm at home and I, if you don't normally know what I look like, I normally wear it straight. I let it dry curly, it's a lot larger than normal. When you are in a video conference, you don't wanna be messing with your hair. It's not particularly professional and it's really distracting for your audience. So what I decided to do today, because I am really fighting the urge to run my hands through my hair, I put my hair back in a headband because now I know I can't touch it. So if you are prone to running your hands through your hair, pull your hair back, wear it in a simple bun, a ponytail, or throw it in a headband then the problem is solved. I think the key aspect here, this is probably the most important tip, it's lighting. Number four, lighting. Now, not all of you have the luxury of being able to move your computer around. A lot of you are working with a desktop, so I have a couple of options for you. If you can move your computer, 99.9% .9 of the time, the videos, if you go back and watch my videos, as of even right now, I'm filming in front of a big picture window. I will put up a picture of my exact setup as I'm sitting here right now. I'm not using studio lights. I have nothing fancy going on. I don't have an overhead light on. All I'm using is natural light. I am facing due east. It is the afternoon, so the light is filtered. Natural daylight is the best light you can film in as long as it's shining directly on you. If you do not have that option, do not worry, I have some other options. First of all, I have some don'ts. Don't film with the light behind you. If it's shining behind you, my hand is gonna be the light for demonstration purposes. We're going really high tech now. If the light is behind you, on camera, you are going to look like a dark blob. You also don't want direct overhead light. All it does is cast horrible shadows down on your face. It makes your eyelashes cast shadows, which makes it look like you have horrible dark circles. Even if you already do, they make it look worse. Your nose will actually cast circles down. It's just, it's, it's bad, it's not good. And you also don't want harsh direct light coming right at you. You don't want it harsh. You want direct but soft light. So if you don't have the luxury of a window, and you don't own a ring light, this is a really simple trick. Everyone has a lamp somewhere in their house. Unplug the lamp that has a white or daylight colored bulb in it, not a yellow bulb because yellow light is no good. You want light that is as close to daylight as possible. So you take your lamp with a shade on it, which will soften the light and put it behind the camera. So light is here, camera's here, here you are. That way it's diffused, it's soft, it's in front of you like a window, but it's not like a spotlight on your face. It's the most inexpensive and easy way to do it. Even if you are filming on a desktop, just pull that away from the wall a little bit, stick that lamp back there. Even if it's slightly angled a little bit to one side or the other, you should be okay. Tip number five, it's all about the angles. We've all seen the Instagrammers who've got holding the camera up like this and they're taking their outfit shot. It's not just so that they can look thinner, although that has a lot to do with it. Ideally, you want your camera lens slightly above eye level, but not higher than your actual head. So right about hairline is ideal. So you're looking slightly up, it will force you to sit up straight. Posture's always better, it looks better on camera, and it's just the ideal angle for filming. So how do you do that if you don't have a tripod set up like a YouTuber does? Pretty simple, stacks of books, put it on another table, move it around, just get your camera, even if it's stuck to the phone, just get it up so that it's the camera lens itself that's on the actual computer is about level with your hairline or a little bit above your head, but not any higher than that. Tip number seven is about distance. There is nothing worse, and we've all seen people do this, especially our parents' generation on FaceTime, where they're FaceTiming you with the camera like this and you're getting an excellent view of their nostril. So it's gonna make everyone really uncomfortable if you're right up in their business in a video conference call. But also, you don't wanna be too far away mostly because they can't hear you, but they do wanna be able to have eye contact with you. So the ideal distance is kind of what I'm doing now. 
When I sit down to film a video, I'm always making sure where I am in the frame before I hit record. So ideally you want, so your shoulders are in the frame, the top of your head is basically sitting at the top of the frame, not too much negative space, maybe a little distance between you and the top, but not too much. You're just about chest height. Little wiggle room in case you wanna move, but you're basically filling it up to be about this much. That is the ideal distance. Tip number eight, what to wear. Well, it kind of depends what job you do. Um, some obviously are gonna be more casual and some not as much, but generally speaking, solids are always a good plan. Stripes can make you physically nauseous if you're in the audience. Even though they look great in person, they tend to appear as if they are moving on camera. The same with tiny little prints. And most importantly, go with what you are comfortable with because if it's itchy or something that you're fidgeting, making sure your bra strap is hidden, it's again, it's distracting. And if you are uncomfortable, you are not gonna give your best during that video conference. And the key is if you, you have to be comfortable during this or as comfortable as possible. Tip number nine is about sound. Now this one you have probably the least control over and you might not want to invest much or anything into this, but this is a very fluid situation and we don't know how long we're going to be doing this. So I do want to point out that if you can enhance the sound of your voice in a video conference, your audience will really appreciate it. I am actually using a lavalier microphone that is not actually connected to me. It is stuck in a piece, I'll just give you a little trick here. It is stuck in a piece of floral foam and it is intended to be used to be plugged into a phone. I purchased an adapter so it can be plugged directly into a computer or in my case into my camera, but it's a pretty inexpensive piece. There are good ones for under $50 and the sound quality is so much better than what you will get coming straight from your camera or a computer or even the phone. So if it looks like we're gonna be at this a while or it's something that you're doing a lot, Amazon carries them. Again, shipping is a little tricky on Amazon these days. I will look around and see who has the best shipping options and the best prices. But if it's something you've ever been curious about, I will list what I am using and put it in the description box. And that brings me to my last tip. Tip number 10 might be the most important. Do a test run. Make sure that what people are seeing on the screen is what you want them to see because you don't want them to see what happened to this poor girl? I think it really depends on just like the ethical standards of the profession. And in reality, I've heard that social work kind of has very high standards and and like <laughs> like good standards in terms of things. And that oftentimes people don't, like people of other professions don't have. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> what happened? I saw nothing. Oh my God, Jennifer. I always try to find the humor in every situation and that post has had me laughing for days, but obviously you don't wanna just avoid that, but you wanna see what your audience is going to see. You wanna make sure that what you present is what you want them to see. So it gives you the opportunity to check the angles, the lighting, the sound, how you look, all that stuff. Do you like how your makeup looks? All that. So if you are able to do a test run or even just take a quick screenshot, just so you can be comfortable and ensure that your audience is seeing what you want them to see before you're actually sitting in front of your boss or your colleagues, that is key. And of course I have a bonus tip for you because, just because, it is so tempting to constantly look down, I have a monitor in front of me, and check yourself in the monitor. If you can avoid that and look at the camera lens instead, it will go so, well for you. Your viewers, your audience, they want to look at you. Eye contact is so important. We are social creatures. So if you can force yourself to smile and to look directly at the camera as much as possible, everyone who is on the video conference call with you will greatly appreciate it. Now for some bonus sharing stuff, some of the recipes, because I have been cooking more than usual. If you don't know me, 
I am usually an empty nester. I have two college age boys. One is a freshman in college. One is a senior in college. They both attend the University of Mississippi, also known as Ole Miss, but they are both currently at home. Now that we have a full house again, I find myself cooking more. And there are two websites that I've always gone to, but even more so now for great recipe ideas. The first one is Skinny Taste, skinnytaste.com. And especially now, this is not the excuse to pig out and eat all of our quarantine snacks. We kind of want to try to stay even because when this is over, it will be summer and we'll be getting into bathing suits, right? Fingers crossed. So it's not the time to bulk up. Skinny Taste has some great recipes. Another one that I use a lot is budgetbites.com. I don't remember which site I got this one from, but what I just recently made was a chicken zucchini stir fry. Chicken is still pretty easy to find in the grocery stores. If you can't find it in the fresh section, the frozen section is still pretty stocked with chicken breasts. So chicken has been our go-to protein lately and it was pretty easy to make and it replicated Chinese takeout pretty well. So I'll put that recipe in the description box. As far as book recommendations, I have a whole page on my blog, missgoldgirl.com, that lists all my favorite series. Now is the time to lose yourself in a series. You have a lot more time to sit and read and you have the perfect excuse. I personally prefer reading series. I don't like a one and done kind of book. Um, one of my favorite authors released two books or is about to release the second one, but she's releasing two books this month. Uh, she has two series that I very much love. If you haven't started The Country Club Murders, the latest book was released earlier this month. It's by Julie Mulhern. And I've raved about this before on my videos, but just an outstanding series set in the 70s in Kansas City. It has murder. It's very witty. Uh, it's not gory, but it's very well written and intelligently written. But there's a lot of focus also on fashion and the culture of the time and so it's almost like historical fiction in a way and if you like dogs wine runners in particular one of the main characters is a wine runner i'm biased i have a wine runner her second series it's the poppy fields series it's a little more chiclet i guess you could say poppy fields is the main character she is a movie star's daughter she's basically a socialite and it is again more of an action adventure mystery series and that's all I can say about that without giving away the entire plot line. But the latest book in that series is coming out this week. Little belated birthday present to me. My birthday is tomorrow. So I pre-order that and that'll be populating itself in my Kindle the day it releases. I think it releases Tuesday, March 31st, I think. If you do want a standalone book, my best friend just recommended this to me. It's an older book. It was an Oprah recommendation. I asked her though, not Oprah, my friend, and she did assure me that it was not a sad ending like many Oprah books are. It's The Invention of Wings. She just said it was really beautifully written, great historical fiction. It is about a slave that is born, obviously, into slavery, who is gifted to a plantation owner's young daughter on her 11th birthday and how that relationship progresses into adulthood. It's a very interesting concept. Definitely takes us away from what's going on now into a different time period. So if you're looking for something like that, it came highly, highly recommended. I hope this was helpful. Good luck to everyone who is Zoom video conferencing or whatever they're doing on a webcam to get through all this, my heart goes out to you. I hope in some small way I could provide some help, a distraction, a smile, something. Thank you to all of you who are already subscribed to me and have been watching me for a long time. If you're new, I hope you do subscribe and click on that button below. As always, thank you so much for choosing to take some of your time and spend it with me. I really do appreciate it and I will see you in the next video. Bye.